on guys brother bobby here um we're going to talk about why every american needs to own a rifle system as long as other equipment like a chest rig and a t3 pack uh, to support said rifle system especially now in today's world um, unless you want to be a victim uh, like israelis were on october 7th uh, when scumbag terrorists invaded their homeland and massacred thousands um, we in america have the right to own firearms to preserve freedom and to fight against tyranny um, or against terrorism and to not be rollovers and to fight back and I think it's in everybody's best interest to own a weapon system like that. So without further ado we're going to jump into how I built this rifle along as what equipment goes with it as my first line gear to be ready at a moment's notice in case things go south. I think it's good to have those preparations mentally prepared to give you peace of mind. Let's dive into it guys. Just a disclaimer none of this gear is going to save your soul. Uh, the power, the only power that can save your soul is Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came down and bought us at a price and saved us from sin and saved our soul. So this, as cool as this gear is, it's not going to preserve your soul. And it probably is not even going to preserve your physical body. Um, you know, it's not really the, the gear, it's, it's the faith behind the gear. Um, and it's important for you guys to know that. So full disclaimer, uh, take it as you will if you take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> All right, let's dive right in guys um, <clears throat> So This is basically uh, My rifle uh, my general purpose rifle. This is where I ended up right after I've gone through a lot of gear trying out different optic systems um, Trying out lots of different setups um, This is what I've come up with so We're just gonna dive right into it cool waste of time Grand thumb likes to go tip to butt, so we'll go we'll go butt to tip. <laughs> so right up front we have, uh, or right in the back we have uh, this is a BCM gunfighter stock, and I like to weave my sling through the actual stock. I try to get rid of a lot of metal, uh, unnecessary metal like uh, QDs on slings um, that tend to you know just rattle and make noise and add just a little extra weight, which is not a big deal, but it does you know for me I just like things more streamlined and silent so i actually weave my sling through the stock and talking about slings this is a t-rex arms uh sling i actually love these things these are my favorite they are super streamlined they offer a little bit of like mesh material on the inside for slight uh, padding uh mesh material will also you know be good for sweating and and uh you know providing a little bit more ventilation Right, so I love these slings. These are on all my rifles. Uh, love the company of T-Rex Arms too. Love what he's doing over there. And uh, as always, uh, made in the USA. Um, so that's my sling setup. That's my stock setup. The buffer tube system, again. So I built this rifle. This was a strip, complete strip lower. Um, and I built it myself um, because I wanted it to be to my preferences. And to what I liked, again, over the years. Tried a lot of things. And this is where I'm at. This is my main squeeze. This is what I'm going to go to. This is my baby. Throughout all the things that I've tried before, this led me to this. And I think, and I hope you guys all find that destination too, uh, because there's a lot of stuff out there that is snake oil, and then a lot of stuff out there that is hype, and it's good to just get down to what really works. Um, so uh, buffer, buffer tube system is just a BCM buffer tube, spring, and buffer uh, for the lower and um, Magpul uh, K2XL grip because I have big large hands and so this um, I can you just get a better purchase and I'm not so over extended on the normal A2 style grips where I'm like this and my trigger fingers like way up here so the XL grip brings me back to where like my trigger is my trigger pull is a fair in a fair position you know I should say uh, speaking of the trigger this is a Geisley SSA two-stage trigger, uh, the, the expensive one, the one that's in the Mark 12s. Love the trigger, um, especially the way that I built my system and how I fight. Um, this trigger fits the way I train and the way I'm going to fight. Um, also within the Magpul pistol grip, I have um, just some oil to keep the gun wet and also two extra spare batteries to go onto my LCAN, uh, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, 25 round magazine. I have 77 grain Black Hills 
um, what is it? The, uh, the good stuff, the Mod O, uh, 262, uh, I forget what it's called, but very expensive stuff, very good ammo. I think it is the best on the market, but any 77 grain is going to be just fine. Um, so I just have that loaded in one of these magazines here with, um, an original mag pull with some paracord so I can pull it out, yank it out in case I have to reload from here. And this sits down a little lower cause it's not a 30 round mag. Um, I could just pull it out with the mag player. So I added that on there and I do that with most of my 20 round magazines. Uh, the charging handle, this is a Radian Raptor. I think it's the SD charging handle. Um, love, love the Radian charging handles. I think they're the best on the market, but everybody now is kind of going through to the ambidextrous, ambidextrous charging handles. So I think that you'll be fine of whatever company you go to, as long as it's a reputable one. I just love the Radians. They were like the first ones to do it and they're smooth. Love the, the leathers. And, um, you know, I'm just, this is, this is what I ended up with after trying other charging handles. Love the Radian Rapid charging handle. Uh, controls. These are just uh, regular controls here. Uh, I think it's just the regular lower AR-15 parts control kit. Uh, nothing special on that. Um, I understand why people would get the uh, Radian safety selectors for the uh, 45 degree throw. Uh, I just like the positive click of the mil spec uh, controls. Um, diving into the optic. So <laughs> this is an Elcan, obviously stupid expensive. I would not recommend this optic for, you know, most people. <clears throat> so I wouldn't even recommend this myself, but I got it at such a steal of a deal. I bought it off of a veteran and a uh, ex cop who had just had this laying around. He was trying to get rid of it. And I bought this at a stupid steal, could not pass it up. Uh, but I would, I would have put actually an ACOG on here. That's what I was more leaning to. Um, but the Elcan I think is, uh, better than the ACOG in some ways, but not in some others. I'm not going to dive all into that, but it has these levers here and uh, for the quick QD dismount system. I actually zip tied these. There's a place to zip tie them in there um, just for some added securement. Um, and I've never had an issue with it, but for my peace of mind, I did go ahead and zip tie because this optic's not coming off. I'm not running backup sites. Um, if you know anything about the Elcan, they are bomb proof. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, at all and so that's my optic system on there the Elcan this has been just a phenomenal optic the glass clarity there's videos on it phenomenal optic um, but if you don't have the coin for it like a lot of people don't um, I would you know I recommend some sort of magnified optic as civilians it's very important because we are not part of an element that has support system so we're out there by ourselves and I think positive identification is huge to positively identify your enemy and to get first round impacts. Um, you know, you don't want to be out there shooting first and then missing, giving away your location and then not having the support of a full military behind you. I think having a magnified optic is the way to go for civilians. Um, but you do you. That's just where I've come along in my build. Uh, and then right here we have a, this is the sentry strap. Love it. Just gives me the opportunity to stow my rifle and the sling streamlined um so love love the company too uh love all christian companies i ordered this and they sent it to me in a box with a scripture on it and a thank you from the actual owner himself so love the love those type of companies um the upper so the whole upper is a bcm 14 and a half inch pin welded uh elw enhanced lightweight uh barrel and uh love it absolutely love this upper love bcm as a company the reliability, durability, and um, the integrity of the company alone makes this, I think, one of the best options you can get for an AR-15. And so that's why I went with BCM. I think these are at the top for me. This is what I would recommend for somebody if they wanted to have a one and done rifle, I'm gonna recommend BCM all day. Uh, BCM fighter grip, or not fighter grip, a uh, four, four grip up here. These are cool. Um, when you wanna like barricade onto something, they can kind of get in the way, but you shoulder the rifle standing and being in unconventional positions. I think it's good to have one of these, which is why I have it. Uh, also have a bipod. This is the Magpul, uh, the new one they just came out with, super lightweight. Um, and I have a pull tab on here to just extend it fast. Um, 
and uh, some some camel wrap on the bottom here which is actually kind of getting eaten up by all the soot from the gas um, but love the bipod don't even know it's on there um, i would rather have the bipod than actually the foregrip if i had to choose but for right now i'm rolling with both um i have a surefire scout this is the dual fuel um these haven't been the most reliable actually i think surefire kind of and I missed the ball with these. A lot of these have broken down. Um, I actually bought this off of a buddy uh, and it was broke and he sold it to me for stupid cheap. So I actually went with the Surefire light, but I'm not all about spending all this money on, you know, white lights. They're just lights. Um, I think it's good to have Candela, uh, but at three, four, five hundred dollars, it's just like, dude, just throw on an $80 light on there with a the mounting system and call it a day. You know, you just need light in general. Um, but I got this at a seal of a deal, and I do love Surefire. Uh, they are a trustworthy brand. I think when it comes to flashlights, uh, they're the best out there. So it's a Surefire Scout Light Pro Dual Fuel. Um, I, th I think the lumens is around 1200 or 1500 or something like that. Uh, it takes both CR123 and the rechargeables. And uh, that is pretty much sums up the build. The muzzle device I have on there is a Surefire three prong. Um, and that's it guys that's my build that's what i've come along with um the mindset behind the build is i am not looking for a gunfight i think as civilians none of us should be um but in the event you are i take the mindset and the approach of shoot evade resist escape much like sears uh, survive evade resist escape i'm trying to shoot evade shoot back again evade create more distance I never want things to be within really 300 meters. In, a, in my perfect world, perfect situation, I wouldn't want it to be within 300 meters. Um, but I've trained with this firearm system where I can actually put shots at one yard up to five, six, seven, 800 yards, depending on how um, you know, far you want to take this. The Elkans glass is amazing. I can easily see pretty clearly out past 500 yards, 600 yards even, um, and I'm really, excited to really take this to much longer distances. Um, so that's my rifle build and that's where my mindset is at, to shoot, evade, resist, escape. I'm um, not in a support unit. I do have a squad of people that I will train with. Shout out to my boy, David. Uh, we're starting to run, uh, you know, touch up on the comms and things like that now. So it's good to have a squad with you. But if you don't have a squad, I think shooting, evading, resisting, escaping, at all costs is going to get you out of, and, and uh, you know the best way to survival. Um, we shouldn't be looking for gunfights, in my opinion. But what happened on October seventh in Israel is why we need to be prepared and have equipment. So that is my rifle. Now with the rifle, it's never just a firearm, right? It's everything that goes with the firearm. You've seen here: optics, sling, light, ammo. Is things that make this function. But to support the rifle system, we now have a chest rig we're gonna talk about. So this is a Mayflower chest rig. Um, I got this off my buddy, David. I tried to talk him out of selling it, but he was so persistent on selling to me for months. And I just said, you know, fine, I'll pick it up off you. I bought it off of a steel and I absolutely love this chest rig. Out of all the chest rigs that I've tried, I think this one really fits home for me because over the years of training and trying out all this kit, and the reason why I'm making these videos so you guys don't make those same mistakes is that I find out I found out what's best for me. And that is I like streamlined equipment, right? I don't like things bulking. I don't like things slopping. I like streamlined, keeping the weight tight, uh, keeping the chest rig tight to my body. So it's solid. It doesn't move. Um, and I like streamlined equipment and this chest rig, everything's sewn in. So it makes it extremely streamlined for a chest rig. Uh, the way it hugs my body forms the form factor of it around my body is perfect and it holds four magazines up top which is what i have here four third round magazines um and we'll just dive into the context of it so you guys can get an idea of why i think you need to get a rifle and then some sort of support system to go with it like a chest rig or a plate carrier um plate carriers are not totally my jazz i do think there's a purpose for them i tend to walk away from plate carriers i do still own one but I like, do like the chest rig aspect more. I'm like David, as soon as I put plates on, I generally just get uncomfortable and want to take them off, right? Um, David went in and fought a giant with a slingshot. And not to get off topic, but 
This is just a modern day slingshot. You know, it's not the slingshot that's going to kill the enemy. It's the faith behind the slingshot and your walk with Christ that's going to keep you alive because the only power they have is the power that comes from the Father to take your life. It's, it's all granted by him alone, is what I believe at least. So this is just a modern day slingshot, right? And this is David's satchel that he used to put extra rocks in, right? So he had a, he had a slingshot and he had a satchel and he picked up a few rocks and then he went to the battlefield. That's what this is, just a modern day satchel to hold some extra rocks, right? So you can use your slingshot and sling, sling things towards uh, the bad guys, right? The evil people. So the context of this, we just have four mags up front. Um, I have some, there's a little GP pouch behind here. It's like a little Velcro pouch behind here. I just have some right in the rain and the map of my general area. Uh, to the left pocket, um, this is the only pocket that I will leave to be adaptable. Everything else stays the same. It's important to have pieces of kit and to get into the habit of mirroring that kit, right? So my rifle is the same, it's not changing. My kit should be the same, it's not changing. And that way it's staged and ready to go. Um, it's important not to bounce things around from kit to kit. I did that for years and I think there's lots of merit into mirroring a certain kit, a certain idea, a certain um, fighting mentality and sticking with that and training with that so that way you're good to go. Uh, so this is the only pouch on here that will be adaptable uh, for reasons that I'll discuss. But for the most part, I just carry a shemag in here. It's good to cover up your eye, to conceal your identity with a shemag. And, you know, for colder weather like it is approaching, it's good to just have some extra protection around the face. So that's what I usually carry in here. Uh, I will just getting uh, back into comms. Uh, so me and my friends are rocking these radios and we're testing things out. But that's when I'm with a squad, I will have a radio in here. Um, or I will have smoke in here, right? Um, it's good. Uh, smoke is one of the most, I think, underrated tools that we don't talk about enough in the uh, two-way community to have smoke and to be able to pop smoke and use that as concealment, especially with my mindset where I'm shooting, evading, resisting, escaping, shoot, pop smoke, evade, shoot again, pop smoke. If I have to do that over and over to survive, that's what I'm going to do, right? I'm not looking to push the gunfight, especially when I'm by myself. I don't think anybody should be doing that. You're not Rambo as much as we all like to be. We're not. So uh, that's why I leave this pouch adaptable so that I can put either radio in there, smoke, or for most cases, it's just a balaclava or a shemag. Up front here is also for some more concealment. On the top here, this is not concealment. This is just a spuds pouch to um, wipe the lens off of my Elcan or any other optics like uh, my pistol as well. I have a red dot on my pistol. Um, and that's just, just, just to wipe the, op, uh, the optics and the lens uh, on those optics. Uh, and here we have a survival poncho. This is basically a survival blanket, but just in a poncho form. And this is huge because if somebody has thermal, if there's enemies with thermals out there, you're going to die. Um, hate to say it, but if somebody has thermal optics and they see heat signatures, you're going to die. This is a very cheap um, defense. Uh, you put this on and the heat reflects back in and it doesn't give off your heat signatures. So I highly recommend uh, this. I have this on all of my kit, different systems. I always make sure I have one of these just in case there's thermal um, devices from the enemy and they can see me. That's a good way to conceal yourself in the dark or in the day. So that's in that pouch. In here pouch I have two pistols, um, two pistol magazines. These are 20 rounders to accommodate my Glock 17. Um, which if you guys know my channel, uh, you, the Off Grid Church, you'll have seen this before. I EDC this, this is my go to war pistol, everything. This, I've had a lot of rounds through this, love this piece. That's my Glock 17, right? It's always on me. Um, so I have two pistols to, um, you know, support that secondary firearm. They could easily become my first primary if my rifle goes down. Uh, in this pocket, I have an extra 20 round magazine as well as a right in the rain pen in there that I just shove in there. But this is a 20 round magazine here. Um, I like running 20s in my rifle system. And the whole point of this kit is to support the things that actually matter most, right? And I think a lot of us get carried away and carry things that are not necessary on here. But they're really the thing that you really need fast access to is what you should be carrying, which is ammo, meds, 
um, and things like, you know, if somebody's got a thermal, let me go ahead and grab this thermal on right here, or I need comms, I need to communicate, or I need to conceal my face and hide better with a balaclava, or I need to put smokes in here and use that for fast access. I don't want to be digging my pack for those things. So this is, that's what you should be uh, prioritizing up front on this rig. Um, speaking of meds, uh, behind this fourth, in front of this fourth mag, I have trauma shares, which are just using the retention of the magazine strap in between. This is my, like one of my last reloads. So, uh, that's why I have it over here. So it's not in the way of my primary reloads, which doesn't even have a bungee retention strap on this one. Pull it out fast, index it fast. And this rig, it doesn't have retention. It just has the slots and the cells. It's actually very fast for retention, holds the magazines very well. Had never had any issues with it so far. Um, so I have the trauma shears right in front of the magazine up here. Tourniquet, self-explanatory. Um, I have a Sharpie marker. I try to camo tape. I try to just blend in as much as I can with things. Um, and then a decompression needle, which I actually don't know how to use, but I'm hoping other people know how to use if they find me. And then in here I have a full IFAC. This was the T-Rex arms one, the med one refill kit. That whole thing fits in this pouch here, which is pretty awesome because that has everything you need. Uh, has extra gauze, has a hemostatic, uh, has burn agent, has chest seals. Um, you know, and uh, Israeli bandage. So it's like a full IFAC, it's, it fits beautifully in there. Um, I think I told you what chest rig this is, right? This is the Mayfowler Velocity Systems chest rig. And it just fits perfect. Couldn't recommend this enough, but for me, there are lots of chest rigs out there, but for me, this has become the standard for me. This is where I'm at with my kit, right? And I have gloves attached on the bottom here. Um, it's important to just have some gloves on you at always. So these are just kind of dangle right here. They don't get in the way. They're very lightweight. It's not like I have, not like they're heavy bouncing around. These are just gloves, super lightweight. So it's a good place to put those right there. Um, and that's pretty much it for the chest rig. Um, onto the T3 pack. It's just a T3 uh, salt pack with a hydration bladder on the inside of the compartment. Um, as you can see, actually, you know, I'll just remove it. Um, it has love this pack because it's very streamlined and, and the form factor to your body with the bladder system forms to your back and just you know it's good to have some water so it's basically a hydration pack salt pack up here we have two mags accessible which is very cool because um i can use this as a you know shooting bag and place my rifle in between here and when i need to reload i just have reloads already accessible right there um, I have these clips here that I usually come with my Air Pro 2 or another pair of extra gloves or just anything that I uh, put in there last second that I would need. Uh, but mainly my Air Pro live out here when it's staged, they live out here. Obviously, when you're in a gunfight or you're at the range training, the Air Pro immediately comes off and you wear those first. So uh, I just have it there for staging purposes. One chem light in here right now, I usually have all of this filled with chem lights, uh, but I use mine at the last range day. Big America flag, because that's who I'm representing, America. Uh, this is the country I was born in. I didn't have a choice in that. I didn't have a choice, and many people think they have a choice, and they're all depressed, and like, well, I want to, you know, be taller or shorter, or I wanted this color eyes, and it's like you were, there's many things you actually don't get to choose, and what country you're born in is actually part of that. So God placed me here, so I have a love for my country. Um, my love for my country does not exceed my love for Christ. Uh, patriotism is a good thing, but it shouldn't trump um, you know, your walk with God and uh, your love and obedience uh, to the Lord and to his commands trump the Constitution. As much as I love the Constitution, which I think the Constitution is a spiritual, a spiritual document, um, by the way they wrote that, it's just genius. Um, you know, God is who I answer to at the end of the day. But love my country. I was born here, raised here, served my country. I am a veteran as well. Um, and then on this side, so two rifle mags, and then I have another extra pistol over there. You can shove another tourniquet, whatever you want in there, but it's cool that it leaves these fast access and it's very small streamlined. Like you can't overpack this, right? So I just have extra, extra meds, um, you know, another basically spear IFAC in the bottom compartment with some combat wipes, uh, Shamag, another skull cap. And then up top I have basically just a weapons repair kit. So I have a whole bolt repair kit, uh, camshaft and firing pin, things like that. 
as well as, um, you know, uh, let me see what else I got here. Let's just open this sucker up. Oh yeah, I got a headlamp in here. Um, some more, oh, there's another chem light in here. So basically just headlamp, bolt repair kit, extra batteries, um, CR123 is for my flashlight uh, for both my rifle and my pistol and just the uh, redundancy items up top. And on the inside is just a water bladder with a boonie cap that I always have in here, uh, as well as my shemag. Always have a shemag. And then just in case I find myself in a position I can't get out, nice to have some bolt cutters to pry open some sort of locking systems to get a way out, right? To provide another entry point and doing it somewhat stealthy so you don't have to blow through the thing with your firearm. Um, and that's it guys, that's my system, very streamlined. As you can see when I turn around with the pack on, it's very streamlined, everything sticks to my body well, very lightweight, very mobile. It's important to have the support you need with your system to have um, you know, your firearm and the things to support it. Um, and with that, I have a full combat loadout, just that. And I usually run a battle belt as well if I have time to put it on. You know, if I see a threat coming where it's not like October 7th for the people like Israeli where they were caught off guard, but you kind of get a warning, say you're a few neighborhoods away, this is going down, okay, I have time, then I will throw my battle belt on as well to give me even more support so I can do even more damage uh, to darkness and to evil. In the case where I do have time to throw a battle belt on, um, goes on, I already, my ABC belt that I carry every day is already a, an inner Velcro line belt. So this just slaps on over on the outside of it. Just like such. Very fast and accommodating. I don't see any situation where I probably wouldn't have this on. Um, but in this situation, boom. Just like that. Battle belt is on. Pistol is there. And now I have more capability um, that is very streamlined as well, as you can see. As long as another IFAC right here, or you can use any other materials in there, uh, batteries, chem lights, whatever you need for the mission. But uh, the main thing is to support the pistol. Uh, and it's just good to have a second firearm out on the battlefield if need be, and this strap just goes right over such. So when you're running, both to stay streamlined, right? So that is the full loadout. Now you're ready to get some work done. Rifle, chest rig, salt pack, battle belt, secondary, which could easily be primary, especially when you can take this out to 100 yards uh, if you train on it well. So the full loadout right there, we have the rifle, uh, four magazines right here, one in the gun, that's five, Two on the T3 pack, that's six, seven. That's a full combat loadout. Um, you're ready to do some work. So that's my setup, guys. I hope this information helped you. Um, the most important thing you'll hear people on YouTube say at the end of their videos is training, and that's actually true, man. Like, if I didn't have a rifle and I came across the battlefield and found a crappy, you know, I don't want to name companies, but, you know, crappy company with just irons, like I'm going to feel like I hit the lottery because I actually know how to use that gun and I can hit out to 300 yards with irons all day. So, you know, it is the, the training and you're going to feel more confident. Um, don't feel the need to go out and spend all this money on surefire lights and optics that cost more than the firearm. Get yourself some training. You're going to thank yourself later. And then once you feel confident enough, go out and build another rifle and do it the way you wanted to, which is what I did with this one. Getting myself uh, a full BCM upper. Uh, and getting the optic that I wanted, uh, whereas mainly the, the money is going to come into, right? It's, it's what upper you choose or if what full rifle you want to buy. Um, but the upper is going to have a lot to do with the cost factor. And I think BCM offers the best cost factor with, uh, you know, being the company as reputable as they are. And, and, and then, you know, just there's a great phenomenal company. So um, don't, you know, when, once you get the training in, you have the experience, then go out and, and get a rifle and do it and build it the way you want, which is what I did here. And that's why I'm making the video for you guys. You know, I think it's stupid important to own kit like this and to just, even if you only go to the range once a month, rifles are a little easier than handguns. You know, it's kind of like riding a bike. You can get out there once a month, 
you know, hit them targets, confirm your zeros, give you that confidence and then just stage it and have it ready to go. Um, and this thing is just so, I'll, 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 end, I'll end the video with this. Um, at this time in our lives, it's, it's best to be physically in shape, uh, mentally in shape and spiritually in shape. And to go with that, having the gear set aside, staged and ready and being a prepared citizen um, all accumulates into, you know, a candlelight, if you will. You can be, if something happens like what happened to Israel, you can be a light and, you know, go into the darkness with the 10,000 angels of the Lord with you, you know. And so I'll end it with that. This is Brother Bobby. Hope you enjoyed and uh, see you guys on the next one. Over and out. Oh, wait, I forgot one thing. <laughs> so on the bottom here, I have, you guys are probably wondering, what's that? This is a bungee cord that goes through the drain socket that I put on here. And this just holds my, uh, my, my, my rain jacket, my wet weather jacket here that I have here. Um, not the most secure, but it hasn't moved on me. And I've rocked around with this and it's still attached and doesn't show any signs of falling off. So figured I'd uh, let you in on that before I close this video up.